On the night of October 30th, there was a drone attack on the city of Zeleznogorsk, Kursk region of Russia. Local telegram channels reported on this. As a result of the strikes of Ukrainian kamikaze drones, fires broke out in different parts of the city. The images were taken and shared by local residents. As a result of the incident, several cars were burnt and damaged. The Russian side said that the drones were shot down by the air defense system, and their debris caused a fire. Это осколок машины. Ебало машину. Человеку, глянь. Это дрон лежит, глянь. Это пиздец. Прям над нами. Так там еще где-то осколки полетели. Мы, мы, мы на скамейке сидим. Это летит просто огромная штука сюда. Пиздец. Ну, тут есть... Пошлите в подъезд. Russia's Republic of Chechnya has been targeted by drones for the first time since the start of Russia's full-fledged invasion of Ukraine over two years ago. Head of Chechnya Ramzan Kadyrov reported that a drone attack struck the Russian Special Forces University named after Vladimir Putin in the town of Guterms in the Republic at 6.30 in the morning. As a result of an unmanned attack on Tuesday, the roof of an empty building on the territory of the Russian Special Forces University caught fire. Kadyrov said in a post on Telegram channel that after the attack there were no casualties and the fire in the building was extinguished. The Chechen leader noted that investigators have already commenced their work to identify the culprits. The university has not suspended its operations, all services are functioning normally, he added. Earlier, Russia's defense ministry claimed that seven Ukrainian drones were shot down over three of the country's border regions, as well as over the Black Sea. The Russian University of Special Forces named after Vladimir Putin is the first and currently the only private educational institution in the Russian Federation to provide professional training for special units. The university was founded in August 2013 at the proposal of Ramzan Kadyrov. In October, Russian invaders managed to seize more than 470 square kilometers of Ukrainian territory. This is the occupier's largest territorial gain since March 2022. This was reported by Welt Media Outlet. According to media reports, Russia made rapid advances in Ukraine last week. In total, from 20 to October 27, the Russian army managed to occupy 196 square kilometers. At the same time, the AFP news agency, citing data from the U.S. Institute for the Study of War, reported that the Russian army had advanced on 478 square kilometers of Ukrainian territory since the beginning of October. By October 27, Russian troops had taken control of more territory than in August and September, when the territorial gains were 477 and 459 square kilometers respectively. In two months, there have already been significant shifts on the front line, especially in eastern Ukraine, around the strategically important city of Pokrovsk, the article says. The journalists note that two-thirds of Russia's territorial gains in October were in Donetsk region, where Russians are approaching Pokrovsk from the south and east. The Ukrainian army has found itself in a difficult position on the eastern front, given the numerically superior and better armed Russian soldiers. The last time Russian troops managed such an advance in March 2022, when they tried to reach Kiev. In total, in 2023,
They occupied 584 square meters of Ukraine's territory, and the area seized since January 1, 2024 is 2,660 square kilometers, Welt writes. Together with Crimea, annexed in 2014, and the territories in Donbass that had already been controlled by separatists before the Russian offensive, Moscow currently controls about 18.2% of Ukrainian territory. As reported Ukrainian army gained up to 1,300 square kilometers as a result of the offensive in Kursk region. South Korea's spy agency said North Korean Foreign Minister Cho Sun-hui, who is visiting Russia, may be involved in high-level discussions on sending additional troops to Russia and negotiating what his country would get in return. Lee Song-kuyen, a lawmaker for People's Power Party, said in a briefing Tuesday that the National Intelligence Service also told lawmakers it's examining the possibility that some groups of North Korea's military personnel in Russia including generals or other high-ranking officials, may have already moved to frontline areas. The spy agency also said the two sides appear to be struggling to resolve communication issues although the Russian military is training North Korean troops on Russian military terminology, Lee said. North Korea's top diplomat is visiting Russia in another sign of their deepening relations. The announcement of Ko's visit came hours after the Pentagon said North Korea has sent about 10,000 troops to Russia, who are expected to arrive in battlefields in Ukraine within the next several weeks. Pokemon,我一个拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的图案,他的拍的